You're listening to the Chaos Cast. I'm your host, Blair McLean, and with me, as always, is Taylor Romas. Hi. Shani Cullivan. Hello. And Lala Lavin. Yo. Today's episode, Taylor stuffs a moose inside of a turkey. And dips a job. Okay, getting on to our real topic, we're going to talk about Sonic and other media. As anyone who's a fan of the series knows, Sonic is not just a video game series anymore. It's a huge multimedia franchise with lots of things, from tea cozies to vibrators to websites. It's got it all. And so, first off, we're going to talk about something from our good friend Lala. What are you talking about, Lala? The Archie comics. Is that a deep enough voice for you? Yes. Thank you. I'll be working hard on it. Okay. Okay, people. Well, the Archie comics have been around since, like, 1992, something like that. 1993. They're celebrating their 20th anniversary this year, which is going to be cool. Um, well, I think the Archie comics are good. I mean, they're usually really interesting with the storyline and new characters and stuff, but I guess if there's anything bad about it, sometimes they can go about out of character, mainly with Sonic. Like, they'll make him say or do something that he wouldn't actually do or say in a game. But, overall, it's good. Um, I came across Archie Comics accidentally, because I found Scourge on DeviantArt, and I thought he was a fan character. Then I looked him up, and that's when I came across the Archie Comics. And, as a lot of you probably know, I'm a big Scourge the Hedgehog fan. He's my favourite bad guy next to Dr. Eggman. I don't know if you guys like him. I like Scourge. I like Scourge. Scourge was the reason that I ever read a full arc of any of the, any of the comics. <laughs> Same. Because I did the comics at the beginning, and after a while I got to really hate it, because at the beginning it was really awful. Yeah, but, I, I think it got better when Ian Flynn took over. That's basically when Scourge appeared. But yeah, he, like, arcs actually started happening. Like Sonic Universe, there was a Scourge the Hedgehog arc recently, where... He got busted out of jail, and now no one knows where Scourge is now and what he's going to do next, and really looking forward to seeing what That's he's going to do. The only arc of the comics I ever read all the way through was the one where Scourge became uh, king of the alternate Mobius, and then he came back, because that was the only one where he was, like, really the main villain for a long time. Because for a while, he would be just kind of a side villain. He would usually be doing something alongside of other villains. And then he is a good the first time, he was a really big threat. He's a really good villain. I mean, it's never totally clear on what his motives actually are. He just sort of rolls with it type thing. So you're never sure what he's going to do next or what he's thinking of. Now, do you think it would... uh, Now, do you prefer the Archie comics having their own thing, or do you think it would have been better if they had made more or less straight app dab 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 (laughs) dab? Take two. Video game stories. What do you think? Well, they kind of do that sometimes. At the end of a comic, they'll sort of do a story, like a game sort of opening in comic form. But yeah, I prefer them having their own thing because it's just something different. I mean, I mean, I would, I even like I love Scourge. I wouldn't want to see him in a game because I just don't think he would really fit in a game. But it's just something that a lot of fans. I mean, the Archie comics have gained popularity in the last like couple of years, anyway. Yeah. Um, one thing I would like, like about the Archie comics is it does it does things differently because it's in a comic format <laughs> and it's able to have uh, a lot of continuity without having its head up its own anus as much as <laughs> regular series kind of does with continuity, to be honest. But that's why I prefer the original series to have more self-contained adventures and the comic can be the huge long story arcs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, good- the artwork is usually very good. Tracy Ardsley does an amazing job. I mean, especially some of the Arch comic covers. They're absolutely amazing. Yeah. I think the Archie comics is also it's a good way for people, like... I mean, you get old characters that aren't in games anymore, like Fang the Sniper or Mighty the Armadillo. And I guess if you're a big fan of them characters, you get to see them again. Yeah. You know, it's uh, one thing they could do if they were trying to emulate the games more, I think, is they have mm-hmm. really awful camera angles in the comics. Like, you had a panel where you, like, have it at a horrible angle. <laughs> it's like you're stuck behind, like, the camera's stuck behind a tree and you just see where <laughs> behind the tree. Yeah. The comic is glitchy. Yeah. No, 
know, Sonic, you want one, one panel of Sonic's like halfway in the floor. <laughs> it's his head, just his head in the floor or something. It's the Sonic of the Arch Comics. They yeah. just don't want them onto the sidewalk, get stuck sideways on the curb. Well, Ian Flynn did, I don't think it would happen because Ian Flynn apparently doesn't like Mephlet in the comics or something. He's only appeared at the cameo in Scourge Lockdown once. That was really it. Yeah. But, you know, Archie comics, they're fun. We like them. I love them. Shani. She's so quiet. She feels shame. Shame. Shame, Shani. Shame and Shani. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Well, well, I new comics. I'm on the edge of my feet. Then she becomes shamey. Shamey is shame or shame. Okay, moving on. Transitioning. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, start with some. I've got some of the uh, animated shows from the '90s. And since it's close to the Archie Comics, we'll start with uh, Sat AM, which was the second. Uh, Sonic animated television show created by DIC Entertainment, I believe. Geek. No, never mind. Um, Adventures wasn't created by Dick. They were created by ABC. Geek. So, Sonic the Hedgehog, so Sad I Am is the only Sonic series with Dick. Geek, for God's sake. (laughs) (laughs) This is the one a lot of people remember the most fondly. And I agree with them and thinking it's the best of them. It had, uh, it was really memorable. It had a really memorable cast of characters that made it into the, uh, Archie Comics. The Archie Comics. Yeah, they all are. Yes. Much. An adaptation of this. Mixed with the games more. Uh, Julio White returned as the voice actor for Sonic, and he did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe had... The show only had two seasons, and they planned a third one, but it was cancelled because it had low ratings. Uh, it, it was because the, one of the creators died as well. Yeah. It was also because it had trouble competing with Power Rangers. <laughs> um, oh my god, best boss fight ever! <laughs> anyway, um, um, and it also had uh, one of the scariest... Robotniks ever. Yes. Mm-hmm. Love it. And I freaking love the theme that I won't That is the best. Because it'll take up too much time. <laughs> I'll have Shani put it at the beginning of this episode. Um, but yeah, it ran for uh, a couple of years, and apparently, s- oh, Netflix uh, streams it. So if you're looking to watch it and you have Netflix, you can go right ahead. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it ran for a uh, little over a year. I had two seasons, like I mentioned. Not very good at this. Um, <laughs> and it introduced a lot of ideas that were used in other continuities, such as uh, Sally Acorn. Uh, her design, even though she was originally a character in the games, <laughs> she was one of the squirrels released from, or she was the squirrel released from the capsules that Sonic broke. At the end of the levels in the first game, they kind she of got a, she got a growth spurt. Could change her character design and made her a lot more interesting, and also created a lot of furries. And also introduced uh, classic characters like Rotor, Bunny Rabot, Antoine. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, Snively and really set up the universe for the Archie comics, and even though it really wasn't accurate to the games at all, it still uh, was a very good story and got Sonic's personality right. It was basically Sonic in a different setting, is how I would think of it. And it uh, had some great uh, talent. That Jaleel White as Sonic, uh, Rob Paulson played Antoine... Legend. Um... Dr. Robotnik was voiced by Jim Cum- the legendary Jim Cummings. Uh, uh, Chris Summers played Dulcie the Dragon. I like her. A lot of great voice.
voice talent and the animation was solid. The stories were well done. It was rather dark and gritty for a show made for children about a blue hedgehog that ran really fast. <laughs> Before that is the uh, infamous Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. It really had no major plot to speak of, um, but it did bring us many glorious memes, such oh, as such a pink as usual. <laughs> and Sonic says, "Which all the birth is stuff like no good." That's no good. Um, it had a lot of slapstick humor, <laughs> and while it really wasn't that great of a show. It did have, it had a very visually interesting design, but it was still kind of hard to watch. I mean, it was just too wacky. There was no kind of. That's the word. What? Kind of. That's the word. Right. What do you mean? I mean, by kind of. Extremely. Yeah. I mean, you know. I can understand some small kids enjoying it, but, you know, if you're a fan of Sonic, I would skip it. It's just kind of silly and weird. There, I don't really see any reason why you'd want to watch it unless you just like really goofy slapstick humor. I loved it. Yeah. But... But I'm into that sort of stuff, so... But, indisputably, there is a worse Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon. Uh-oh. On August 30th, 1999... Please don't say it. We'll see a new Sonic show. No. Produced in France called <laughs> Sonic Underground. Dun, 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 dun. Actually conceived as an Alvin and the Chipmunks cartoon. Dun, dun, dun. You're a bit late there, Taylor. <laughs> it was, uh, had 40 episodes. Um, <laughs> And featured not only Sonic, but his siblings, uh, Sonya and Manic. Ah! The wrong boy. The third one. Even the girl who had literally the exact same voice as her. Um, for, for a while, I thought there were 65 episodes, but only 40 of them aired. But uh, Ben Hurst who was a uh, writer for Sat AM and was involved in the production, said that there were only 40 produced. Don't know why I said that. Um, and it's really weird. It's not the same freedom fighting thing as Sat AM, but it's just weird. I mean, it's, Sonic Underground involves a lot of music, and they sang a song every episode, and while Sonic with an air guitar is a cool idea, or not an air guitar, a real guitar. <laughs> Sonic with an air guitar. <laughs> an air guitar might be cooler than this. Just... They're instruments for weapons, weren't they? Yeah, they're instruments for weapons, and they were like the children of like a queen, and it was weird. Um, Knuckles was in it. Knuckles was in it for an episode. He was also weird. He fancied Sonya. He's like extremely racist. He has a tent or something. <laughs> and, like his catchphrase in that episode, I hate hedgehogs. I don't know. <laughs> don't watch it. Don't even watch it if you're curious. And he don't put yourself had without taking. Medallions that turned into magical weapons. Sonic had a laser rifle, electric guitar. <laughs> Sonya had a keyboard, laser rifle, and we had, had a drum kit that made earthquakes. Um, the only thing good about that show was Manic. Manic was quite funny, but apart from that... Manic had an interesting character design, but the show was kind of crap. I no know. offense to those who do like it. Just saying that. No, all the offense. <laughs> you deserve it. You <laughs> this show. But at least I'm being polite. Oh, I also forgot to mention uh, Adventure of Sonic the Hedgehog is on Netflix as well as this. Though half the episodes of this have French subtitles, so that's kind of weird. Um, and it was, it, it was just weird. Think out of all the American-produced Sonic cartoons, 
Sam Am was by far the best and most memorable. Uh, the only good one. <laughs> so, uh, screw what they said about the ending. That was Metal Sonic. Yeah, well, the ending of this, the ending was weird. Cause it I know who it is. I looked it up. It's in yeah, it August, but it looks yeah. like his, his eyes weren't even in the same shape as so it Well, someone thought it was Look first. at the way the pupils are arranged. It is, not the pupils, the eyes, because <laughs> for some reason they left his pupils out. But if you look at the shapes that his face is making on the irises, then you can tell it is very obviously. It's, it's a hedgehog of some sort, who I'm assuming is Metal Sonic. Everyone thought it was either Scourge or Super, like the evil Fleetway Supersonic from that other Sonic. Like, no <laughs> that would make, yeah, that would make negative sense. I know because Scourge never even existed then, and I don't know. The, the evil Fleet- Fleetway Sonic is the one that makes less sense. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, they thought it was an evil Sonic of some sort, like his evil twin or doppelganger or metal something. Sonic. It was Metal Sonic. Okay, it was Metal Sonic. That's, what, we'll that's the one that makes the most sense. Okay. It wasn't Silver Sonic, it was Metal Sonic. Silver Sonic only Maybe it was Shadow. Sonic. Maybe it was Shadow. Maybe the, it was Shadow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know... That was back before, you know, Shadow was played seven years before Shadow even shot. existed, you know. It was Tails. It was Tails. Yeah. <laughs> Tails was in the show. Was Tails in the show? I never saw... I never... I guess I missed that. It was, I know it wasn't. Tails was the show. It was never was the show. I've seen, like, clips. Oh, well... It was A.B. Rose. After the Skype recording. Oh, no, wait, no, no. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about Underground. Never mind. I yeah, Tails was in Underground. Watched, I watched Adventure. Tails not in Underground. Tails was in there. Tails was not in Underground, which was great. Yeah. Was Trade one, get the other. Yeah, but he's only <laughs> in it for an episode. Anyway. Maybe it's um, like the cat. It's gone. It is now Shani's turn to share. Hello. Shani, what are you going to share with us? What did you bring to share? Did what? You forgot about Sonic X. Nah, uh, that's not an American animated show, and I am oh. not covering it. I do apologize. Okay, hello. I am mentioning uh, fan works that are noticeable that I know of, and cameos for Sonic himself. Um, I'll start with fan works. Uh, the few that I know of are that are uh, more just redubs that are extremely well done. One being Sonic Bastardized uh, by Super Psy Guy. And as it turns out, all the episodes are still on YouTube, which is brilliant. So. Um, what? It's pretty funny. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's a parody of the anime. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The OVA. Yeah. So, so you guys also famous uh, if you've ever heard of uh, or Chow, which is a podcast he does with uh, other people like Martin Villany. Yeah. I'm butchering that name. It's a little Karibo. And uh, Curvifer, I'm not even going to say Curvifer, and uh, other people. It's really funny. You should watch it. They're way better than we are. No, I'm not trying to suck up. It's just the truth. <laughs> they don't talk about Sonic. No, they, they talk about Sonic. But no, whatever. That's all we have to talk about. Anyway. Uh, yes, the the uh, so- Sonic the Hedgehog fan film is another notable. Uh, well. And Lolz are expert on that. I've seen it. That's yes. It is actually pretty good. I mean, no, it's they could have made it longer, but it is no, pretty good. it's not good. I thought it was good. No, you're wrong. They made Robotic really scary and, like, pure evil as hell, though. I mean, he's not that bad. Yeah, he was scarier in Satan, and also... <coughs> you can't make somebody wearing that costume scary. <laughs> like, classic Robotnik's costume. And they gave Knuckles fingers, which really pissed <laughs> off, like, everyone. I mean, yeah, he was, at, oh, he was just sort of featured at the end, and he's got fingers. I'm giving him fingers. <laughs> That's like the big no no. I like to make my movie. I'm sorry! Okay. You just, you just screwed my hero. 
Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We'll get through this. Anything else, Shani? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, I don't really know many fan works, uh, but Sonic McBastardized is the one I would sort of go go watch and roll about laughing because I love it to bits. Uh, but uh, plenty of cat meals. A uh, few I remember from about ten years ago, for goodness sake. Um, there's a whole massive list if you just look. Um, starting with one that's fairly recent as a sort of uh, second appearance. Uh, Sonic's balloon in the Macy's thanks. Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, Mm -hmm. According to this, Sonic made history as the first video game character to star in the parade in 1993. He was the only game character until Pikachu made an appearance in 1999. He was also, uh, during his first appearance, one of two balloons to crash. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Sonic (laughs) Sonic was also uh, a... uh, is it a sponsor? Would it be a sponsor for Cheerios? Uh, no, that'd be a mascot. It, okay. Uh, yeah, he appeared in uh, a commercial uh, with commercial. with the uh, mascot for Cheerios, which is the bee. Uh, the the honeybee. Yeah. Also appeared in Mac- at McDonald's com- commercials Yay. several times. And, and uh, progressive. Yeah, had a progressive commercial. Yeah, progressive. Oh, that's that's cool. Cool. I'm driving. I'm going for progressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he appeared in the uh, progressive commercial. Uh, hey, Allstate, you have a better plan. I'm sorry. Progressive had a Sonic commercial. Uh, <laughs> Don't what I, Taylor. What I remembered from... Oh my god, 11 years ago. Uh, Sonic and a few other notable characters, mostly Spyro and Crash, and uh, appeared in the Tie the Tasmanian Tiger uh, advert, uh, wrapped in bandages <laughs> in the hospital. <laughs> what? Uh, th- th- he appeared wrapped in bandages holding a boomerang in the hospital. He's got a boomerang in his foot. <laughs> what did Amy do to him? So it was Ty, that's the point. That's um, according to this According to this, the style is done similar to that of guerrilla marketing done by Sega during the console wars, obviously, towards Nintendo. Um Megas XLR oh my god, I remembered the name of this character. There is a Thanksgiving Day parade, uh parodied in Megas XLR. And it has a character called Oggy, the adorable Aardvark. Yeah, he's got I blue, need to see that. He's got blue shorts, uh, sorry, red shorts on red shoes and Sonic's quills in the back, but it looks like a sort of cross between a, a pig and a velociraptor. <laughs> we need a picture of that. I'll put, I'll put a picture in the video, it is fantastic. Please um, do. However, uh, this this balloon actually gets attacked by um, the spo- the alien spore that appears in the episode, and it actually uses spin dash when attacked. <laughs> I want that balloon. Uh, hi hi Puffy Ami Yumi. Uh, that was a reference to Green Hill Zone, not Sonic himself. However, um, it shows Yumi looking for uh, Ami to save her from Bigfoot. Makes sense in context, but. Uh, sh- it resembles a video game pattern, and she goes through the loop to loop, and the uh, the texture is in squares. So that is your reference to Green Hill Zone. I think there was only one reference in the episode, but it was played out as a sort of parody of many games. Uh, Mad TV, or Mad even, uh, did a few <laughs> Sonic uh, references, including Green Hill Zone as well, and. <laughs> Sonic being a pros- prosecutor. I think it was a prostitute. Yeah, I was thinking so, prostitute there. Especially because this so, was a drawing Taylor made one time. <laughs> Sonic leaning up against a star post and it looks like he's hooking. Yeah. <laughs> you ever noticed a lot of Sonic's poses look hookerish? 
<laughs> then we know why. Make some hungerish uh, poses. <laughs> uh, Sonic's also been referenced in The Simpsons a few times. Uh, most notable, that I know of at least, was a billboard yeah, that was in the Sonic's Sonic. Sonic's Wait for Marriage. That's the one. Uh, um, so. oh, yeah. Okay, there's actually a list of these cameos which goes into more depth, but uh, these are the ones I picked out as most notable. However, um, there is one which really, really fascinated me, and it says uh, there's an episode of the X Files. I think it says episode three X zero three DPO, and the Green Hill Zone music is referenced. Huh. And, uh, this is, and it actually says, during some scenes set inside an arcade, the theme music from Green Hill Zone can be heard. Brackets, coincidentally, an actor named Jason Griffith played a paramedic in this episode. However, he's not the same Jason Griffith who would buy Sonic eight years later. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is pretty hilarious. That is just cool. Yeah, um, hmm? What? Anything else? Yeah, there's a few more. Oh, okay. Um, Okay, we mentioned the progressive commercial, which is probably the most blatant use of Sonic. Um, Sonic's been mentioned in a few movies. The most notable one for me was Wayne's World. There is an advertisement for an arcade that appears, and you can see Marble Zone in the background. It says time and rings up the side. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph, most prolific, I would say. Mm-hmm. Sonic actually appears and has cameo and actually says something. Uh, real boy this is rings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also gets mentioned and is parodied in Scott Pilgrim series. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially in the uh, third book. I think it's the fourth book. No, it's the third book. That they, uh, Whichever one I've got. It's Scott Pilgrim gets it together, I believe. Which yeah, is yeah. The book where You've got it, it you know. parodies the title screen from Sonic 2 with him and Ramona. Uh, and two more <laughs> two more for your pleasure um, A Day to Remember a band A Day to Remember did a song called You, you Be Tales, I'll Be Sonic <laughs> I think we've heard that actually it's a reference to uh, the, I think it's about a breakup or getting together and the point of the song being that the girl would follow him oh. as Neil's whole Sonic in game That'd be <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the last one is the ultimate showdown of ultimate destinates. Uh, Sonic makes a small cameo uh, fighting, uh, having a slap fight with Mario, as it says here. <laughs> yeah, in the, uh, yeah, in the animated music video for it. Yes, which is just. Uh, There's another movie I know Sonic's made a cameo in. What's that? Yeah. Um, oh, it's it's a, yeah, it's a Christmas film. Uh, there's a parade and there's a, so, somebody dressed as Sonic. Yeah, and, apparently, and apparently on the DVD cover, if you look at the back, you can actually see Sonic, but a lot of people didn't notice this. Uh, Sonic can be seen in a few shots marching in the parade, yes. He does dance as well, he does a sort of jiggle, it's quite funny. <laughs> it's I, I, I reminded it and played it like three times. Hey, it's better than also, <laughs> but also, for an honourable mention, um, oh god, but, uh, I, I wasn't going to do this because it's got a Japanese name and I... I will screw up the the uh, name horrifically with pronunciation. I will put it in the video, however. However, it is a reimagining of the console wars of the 90s, and the main character is called Gear and is inspired by Sonic, and he joins the Segula army after a loss of his best friend, Till, who was ki- killed by <laughs> Nint- Nintendo uh, soldiers. Was <laughs> <laughs> beaten to death and shot eight times in the head and eight millimeter pistol. Did he live? He died. Well, the doctor said oh. <laughs> it would be okay in weeks. Yeah, Till died. I know. I actually, I actually caught a bit of the first episode and Till does die within the first three minutes. Oh, for uh, Till. Uh, okay, that's it for me. Okay, then, uh, Taylor, what are you going to talk to us about? I'm talking about Sonic X. Huh. Well, it's a good thing I didn't talk about that then. Right, Lola? Hey, and I did not know he was talking about Sonic X, okay? Did, actually. I told you before we started. I wasn't listening. Your mic kept going funny, then you started speaking into it really loudly. Like a space now. Just, just... Lola, just... 
Okay. Don't take it on me because I'm desperate. Oh, yeah. Where's the Scottish chef, buddy? Yay. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Sonic X is an animated television series featuring video game hero Sonic the Hedgehog and loosely based on the storylines of the Sonic Adventure series with a bit of Sonic Adventure. Not nah, Sonic Battle. Don't just well. read the article. No, I just want to read the first sentence, asshole. No. <laughs> I mean, that's like plagiarizing a book report. Is there something wrong with that? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Sonic X, um, was a three-season anime about Sonic. It was made in Japan by, um, TMS Entertainment in cooperation with Sega, and it was, um, let me see. It was originally planned as a 52 episode series, but then it got extended to 78 episodes. And um, there were a few different arcs in it. The first arc was mostly about finding the original Seven Chaos Emeralds so that they could try to go back home before Eggman does. And then the second and third arcs were about Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, which were noted as the best arcs. Which, um, it's probably agreeable because they were the only two arcs that were in any way accurate to the games. And then there was one more arc after. There was one more arc after that that was about them traveling through space to find the Chaos Emeralds to defeat a threat called the Metarex, which was actually really good. For the game. And yeah, there wasn't a whole lot, a whole lot bad about the series. The writing was here and there. It was kind of, it was what are you kidding? Accurate to a point where it kind of started to work you. And uh, the ending was also... Um, there's a lot of controversy about the ending because um, in the Japanese version of the ending, in the, ja in the end of the series, Sonic and Shadow do one super attack that drains Shadow of all his energy, as it did at the end of SA2. But at the end, you can see... Um, it shows a grave of a girl who was friends with Shadow, and you can see his Shadow standing there next to it, implying that he lived through that. But in the 4Kids version, in the English dub, which was dubbed by 4Kids, for no real reason, that was edited out. So it still left implied that Shadow died there. Well, they probably left it out because they didn't want to have any reference to somebody being dead. Yeah, they cut out the whole part with Molly dying, and the um, English version, each just disappears. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, a lot of people didn't like it because it had the, um, it had more of a focus on a new main character they put in named Chris Thorndike, who is a uh, boy. He died. Who he died. Something. I wish he would have died. It was really annoying, and it didn't yeah. make sense to have him be the main character, whereas the show was called Sonic X, and it was based on a video game series about the main character being Sonic. Yeah, you see, I want to see a Mary Sue main character in a comic or in a series supposed to be about Sonic, and his name's Chris. Where have I heard of that before? I thought Chris was the ghetto when I first saw him. Yeah, it's Sonichu. Oh, Sonichu, yeah. That's right. They canonized Chris Chan. Uh, be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> be afraid. <laughs> the scenes in the entire anime, one, the scene where um, Shadow... I'm not sure if it's more intense than the Japanese version, because I never saw that scene, but I know in the 4Kids version, Shadow just kind of knocks out Chris with one punch. I see if anything <laughs> bad ever happens to Chris, and I love it. <laughs> it's the best scene in the whole Sonic game. And um, another thing that 4Kids uh, changed that upset a lot of people was um, in probably the best scene in the entire series, which was during the Sonic Adventure 2 arc, where Super Sonic and Super Shadow were fighting the Bio Lizard. In the Japanese version, Crush 40's Live and Learn play, played during that scene. Yes! Just like it did during the final boss, and then 4 Kids mm -hmm. released it with the song that they made. Yeah, that's what yes. I really disliked about the 4Kids uh, version, was that the soundtrack was a lot more... wee generic stuff, and... Yeah, it was like, it was weird. It was like, it was like an orchestral, but it wasn't epic. I I think I actually might know. with orchestra songs. I think I actually might know why they took that out. And why? I think it was just. I think it was just licensing or copyright or something like that. But the Japanese version was allowed to do it. 
Yeah, it's, it's good copyright. Right, they have to play better games. For I kids. Think that a lot of people uh, really dislike about the series, but I'm a fan of is the new cast, which was um, very, very awful at the beginning. I did hate the cast at first, but then it got to the point where, but then when they took over the games, they seemed to start to get better. They were actually really great by the end of the anime. Yeah. They were. They were amazing. It was a lot better. I it mean, was I better. Was to a point where I would have called it good. I think they got good after the anime ended, and right when they hit their peak to where they knew what they were doing, they replaced all of them. Yeah. Except Michael yeah. Pollock. Yeah. Yes! That, that's the best example of why the new cast was good. Mike Pollock playing Dr. Eggman, he was so good that when they decided to replace the cast, he was the only character, only person who they kept on. Yeah. Because I mean, nobody else could be Dr. Eggman. Yeah, the only no way. No one can. person that could come close, I think, is uh, Dean Bristol, but <coughs> he's, well, there's a couple problems with him being Dr. Eggman's voice actor. Uh, may he rest in peace, but he was good for the Eggman. Of, when he was Eggman, when they wrote Eggman, the way they wrote Eggman, when he was Eggman, if that makes any sense, <laughs> yes. he fit that voice. But like I think current Eggman, no one could be him other than Mike Pollock. Yeah. I think yeah. I think that's one of the many reasons Dr. Eggman absolutely terrifies me into stupor. <laughs> but yeah, so Sonic X, I mean, and some of the artwork designs weren't the best choice. I did like the style they picked, but yeah. I didn't like some of the things they did with it. They made a lot, they were, there were some um, shots that just looked really weird. There's one really famous one, I can't find it, where everybody's legs are like, probably a maximum of, like, two inches long, sprouting out of their bodies, and it's from a distance, so it's a group shot, so it's all these Sonic characters like that. Yeah. And it's, it looks so bad. I also didn't like what they did with Sonic's spines. They, they went back to the only giving him three spines, whereas yeah. at this point it had been made very clear he had six spines on the back of his head. Yeah. yeah. And that always that led to a lot of weird-looking shots, especially when Sonic was, like, sitting down with his arms behind his head. It would make it, it looked so weird. Yeah. There were, it did the same thing with Shadow. Well, no, it took it took off two of Shadow's spines. So it was got like, like one spine on the left side of his head, but the right side still had two. <laughs> he was spineless. There were weird animation glitches, or things they mm. just outright messed up on. They gave Knuckles fingers for an episode. They took away Sonic's ears, for one. They gave, they gave Sonic blue arms. There's one clip that's really famous, um, where it's Sonic with his eyes going completely different directions and this really creepy-ass smile on his face. And nobody... Yes. And that's there. Sonic is going to rape you. <laughs> it is <laughs> scary. That was creepy. Yeah, Sonic X, it was a good idea, but it could have been done a lot better. Do you think they'll ever read, like, do a new series of that, or...? I don't think they're going to do another season anytime soon. No, they well, weren't they planning it at one point, but then they sort of changed their mind? I think if they're going to do a Sonic anime, they're going to start over again. Yeah. Which I would like, yeah. would like them to incorporate the rings being money, rather than them be, being what makes Sonic do the spin dash. Yeah, or... Because yeah. in series by now, that's like, the, that's the ring's second mechanism, is that you use them as money. Yeah. Well, except in generations where you use skill, skill points, but in other games, they're money. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see a new series, just to see what they would do with it. Then I'd also like the action scenes to be a lot better. Yeah, maybe if we got a different studio to animate it, like maybe Toei or Bones or someone. Yeah. I, Make it fun. Toei could do really well. Actually, the... Well, no, Toei could do it because they just turned Sonic into Goku. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the... the <laughs> The ring to actually is money is actually referenced in the Sonic X comics. Um, Eggman refers to it as paper, paper money, and, and the rings is still used as power ups. So it just sort of suggests they have no concept. I don't know. Anyway, I think that's all we have time for today. Yeah. I've been Blair McLean. I'm always Chandler. I've been me. And you is? I is Shani. <laughs> Shani Colvin. That leaves Lala. Just her little bee. <laughs>